Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode one of our 150 duplicate challenge. If you haven't watched episode zero, we really start setting up the colony and we talk about a little bit of the hows and what's that we are going to be doing. But to start off with our first three dupes, we already have a couple of challenges. Namely being that the closest water source is right to our left, but if we dig over there, it's just going to make a mess. So I'm thinking that we come around here be able to dig this out a little bit and then drop this down. The difficult part is cycle one, you really want to start setting the stage up with bathrooms, cots, and maybe even research, but this is going to be a little bit of a problem. Let me give it a quick look and see if I can come up with a plan. Temporarily speaking, I think we're going to dig up here, put our pitcher pump down right here, and then we can put a ladder run up and then put down our beginning toilets and maybe some cots. This little cavern here has a ton of carbon dioxide, so does this here, which is really inopportune, but we're going to have to get a carbon sink going sooner rather than later. But once we get those beginning buildings set, I think then we'll work into dropping this tank. Without further ado, let's get at it. Now in this series, as I said in episode zero, we disabled the speed mod. So it's only times one, times two, and times three speed, which is good because we're not going to be able to be going very fast anyways. I want to watch out for this sand here. Any of that sand gets messed up, all this drains, and then it's going to be a pain in the butt to consolidate our water resources. Now that they've finished digging this out and placed the pitcher pump, we'll actually have enough resources to throw down a ladder. I actually prefer to push this over a little bit before we start that ladder run because the light that's coming off the printing pot is perfect for our starting research. So we'll probably put the ladder maybe here. So let's go ahead and do that straight up. That'll be good. Now this is not definitely not the quickest way we could do it, but we'll also open this up and this will allow all of the carbon being produced by our duplicates early on to sink down in this area. And then we can also dig, say, this area out over here and this area out over here. Now we're not going to be able to get through that granite, so we might as well just cancel these for now. All right, there we go. Perfect. So at least we know our left and right lateral limits. Already grabbing some muckroot here. We're at 16,000 calories, but we're going to have to dig a lot and dig quickly too. It looks like we're actually at the top of this biome. You can see the granite pushing us in on this side and on this side. So we're going to have to probably go south relatively quickly. Not a big deal, but we're going to have to dig really quickly because we're going to need all the muckroot we can get our hands on to feed our beginning dupes. Already, we are three cycles away from that first dupe coming through the printing pod. Laying down some outhouses and wash basins. We got some cots over here. This will work out well too because we'll be able to have those beginning room bonuses that'll help out with early morale. Already, we can see some of the muck root being dug up. We want to make sure that that all ends up in this ration box. So we'll go down to it, select muck root. Reason being, any hatches start popping up like this little guy right here, they will definitely take the opportunity to eat that muckroot. Since they're digging up, we're starting to get a better look over here. We see some sweetles with some grub fruits. Grub fruits are a non-water plant, so that is a possibility of a food source we will be running. Look at this. Carpeted tile made out of sandstone. Well, that seems a little cheap. How do you make carpet out of sandstone? I guess they really didn't want to give us easy and early access to thimblery, did they? Before I forget, we need to look at the temperature overlay, make sure there's no sources of heat that are bleeding through, because we're going to be highly reliant on crops, especially in this early game, to keep that many dupes alive. While a couple of dupes are finishing up the bathrooms, we'll go ahead and set down that early research. Grab our research station right here. Putting it beneath the light will give us that work lit bonus, which will really help getting some of that early research done. Now, I think this will be enough room for the supercomputer, but we need a place to use the power. So I think this area right here will do well. And it'll give us a little bit of that copper ore. And we're going to have to put some tiles in. That's not a big deal at all. Starting off with our wheel, our battery, and then we'll throw some wire just like that. Now, I am going to change my digging strategy. As we talked about in episode zero, there's going to be a lot of things that we do differently in this run than we normally do. For instance, I'm not going to be digging and putting ladders every fourth tile. I'm going to try to keep as much of it natural as possible. That way, 
when we finish up, I won't have to remove a bunch of ladders. We can be at the very top of the map and then just start destroying the natural tiles and it'll all start falling down. This way it'll help the pathing on the duplicates when you don't have a bunch of ladders running everywhere and hopefully that'll help keep the frames per second going well. It doesn't look like we're gonna get started with research immediately on cycle one. We're close, but not quite. And it looks like this oxalite is going to end up making some of these outhouses unusable. We'll fill them in as they have. It's not a big deal. Oxalite still produces the oxygen when it's down here in its debris form. Now you might be wondering why these duplicates aren't taking a break yet. And this brings up a good point. I have played a lot with the schedule and giving it a lot of thought and I think this is what we're going to try. Now normally we have the three bedtime slots and then we'll go down a shift and then we'll add three more next to it to where they're sort of bumpering against each other. But because we're running so many duplicates, I want to keep them as tight as possible. So you'll notice that each shift is only off by one single sort of little time block here. Scrolling all the way down, you can see that we have a total of 24 shifts. Here's shift 23, plus the default schedule all the way back up at top, gives us a total of 24 shifts. What this means is with 150 duplicates, each shift will have six. Some of them will have seven. And that will ultimately dictate how many bathrooms we need to run. And as you can see, these duplicates are using the bathroom. And so far, one little block has not been used. So having these bath times shifted over by one should be adequate enough that we only need enough bathrooms for about six to seven duplicates per shift. We'll probably run eight toilets total just to be safe. But we may need to double that up to say... 12 in the case that some of them are taking a little bit too long and while we're in here We're actually going to take the opportunity to move some of these duplicates around as you can see that John Mann has the early bird bonus So we want to make sure that we capitalize on all of the early bird Slots and the first one that does it is all the way down here on shift 8. So we'll go here grab John Mann Yeah, this will be okay, and then we'll move old Miko down to shift one along with Django Amez. Perfect, I think now we're, we're set up a little bit better. All right, with this battery being finished, it is time to get some research going. Now here's where we have a lot of decisions to make on what our early game goals are gonna be. We could start with the basic farming and meal prep sort of route. We could also do power regulation into internal combustion to get the coal generators online. We'll need a water cooler and some plants to get a great haul going. We could also use the advanced research capability. So in this case, I think we're actually going to go with power regulation and then into meal prep to get access to the mess tables. In the meantime, it is time to start digging for everybody else. We will just set up a massive dig command here. And we're going to keep it on priority 5 for now. No reason not to. And we're also going to start to dig down here as well. We need to get visibility on the south part of the biome. We also need to start planning how to drop that water. Take the opportunity to start doing priorities. Now, because we're going to have 150 dupes, I'm probably not going to highlight a lot of the priorities on the dupes coming in. We'll take a look at their skills as they come in and let you know what they're going down. But the priorities are going to be pretty simple for everyone. For instance, we'll start off. No one can do research except for Yango. And then our two digger builders will obviously have the one up on the digging and then the two up on the building so that they prioritize any ladders before they actually dig. And for now, I think that's it for priorities. I didn't like how close this wash basin ended to our ladder run. I want a little bit more room than that, specifically for the airflow. And that way the air can travel from the top of the colony all the way down to the bottom. So we'll make a couple of changes here. With that first research done, we'll go ahead and put the jumbo battery in get us off the single batteries as quickly as possible. We won't deconstruct this battery for a minute because we want it to be able to drain and not waste all the duplicate resources we use to actually charge it. Down on this side, there's a lot of great looking muckroot here. We will scoop this up quickly. We'll put some of these early things here on auto harvest. I'll take the free calories as long as we can get them. I noticed our researcher was doing some digging. Uh, I don't think so. Let's head right into mess tables. And already we have a shine bug stuck in the barracks, keeping everybody awake. That is such a nasty debuff too. Minus 10% per cycle to immunity and plus 10% to stress. 
Now, before somebody comes around here and runs on this manual generator, we'll go ahead and remove that single battery. Oh, look at this, more muck root down here. We'll definitely dig into this area as well. I don't think we want to destroy that early bristle blossom and mealwood yet. We could use the calories, so we'll avoid going through that area. Now, it looks like the printing pot is about to hit. Before it does, though, let's go ahead and plan our advance through this area here. I think we're going to keep digging down. I don't see any problem with the temperatures down here quite yet, so this is a good news. But we'll be able to dig through here and maybe drop this water in and then back it up, make a hole through here to drop this pond in here. Look at all these great calories in there. These bristle blossoms are not growing because there's no illumination, but still. Looking at the timeline, we're already three quarters of the way through cycle three and the printing pod still says it's only 10 seconds away. Not sure why it seems like a little delayed, but there's our automatic pause. Perfect. And now we can go in and select duplicate number four. Wouldn't it figure that our first duplicate we get to choose from? Uh, we only get a choice of two. Now we don't really need rocketry or another researcher quite yet, but that's sort of beside the point. Trivaldo here is nyctophobic and has trypophobia. So that nixes them out. So we're definitely going to go ahead and select this Bonnie here. Without further ado, duplicate number four, John Archer. With John in the colony, it gives an opportunity to go check out the skills. Our other three duplicates don't have a skill point yet. They are, in fact, only halfway through. John here looks like they could be a researcher, but they could also be another builder. They do start with a science of four, and maybe it would be helpful that whenever Yango's not doing researcher, John could, keeping the construction as sort of a secondary. I think that works out well. We'll go ahead and throw our advanced research hat on John Archer. Now, we are having slow progress digging down here because there's not a lot of oxygen, so I think this is an actual good point to start by putting some oxygen diffusers down. We'll start by adding a power line that goes all the way from the top. And here's our oxygen diffuser. Maybe put it right here in the middle. Interestingly enough, both of the Johns have that early board. So they're both now on shift eight. Now, once they get finished building the wire, we're gonna put the oxygen diffuser and a little storage bin to hold some early algae. And that'll help really oxygenate this entire tunnel. Incidentally, it'll also force a lot of this carbon dioxide down here, which will be helpful too. Research is already complete. We're going to go right into advanced research to get access to the supercomputer. Since we have two duplicates that can do research, we might as well smash through this as quickly as possible. But it also means that mess tables are complete, so it's time to put our first haul in. Now, all the duplicates are going to be sleeping over here temporarily. Speaking of which, we need one for our newest dupe. And I guess we'll put it up here since we can't dig into here quite yet. And then we'll move it down once we can dig through. But with the food being stored here... I think it probably makes more sense to put the beginning mess tables here. Now you might be tempted to dig all the way over, but take a look at that sand pile right here. I don't even want to mess with that area. So we're just going to dig and keep one tile away from it. And that way this water has no chance of spilling over. Eventually we'll get this dropped and we'll be able to extend our sort of mess table section on. But for now, this will work out well. Grab some mess tables here. Perfect. Now, as the normal, we're putting a water cooler inside of our mess hall, except this time we are actually going to disable it. Because water is such at a premium, the duplicate's going to have to look at this thing forever with an out of order sign. Well, at least until we get telephones, and then we'll put a telephone in there. Speaking of which, though, we need a little bit of decor, so we might as well go straight into artistic expression. It'll give us the option of using the hanging pot or the flower pot. So far, we've had a lot of digging already done, and... It looks like we're reaching the end of this biome here. You can see where the biome sort of splits. Here's the slime here. Here's one of the biomes with all the Sweetles in it. So our starting biome is not too big. Now, luckily, this doesn't look like it's too bad to dig into. And the heat is okay, but you'll see it starts creeping at 36, 37 degrees. I'm also a little concerned that we haven't found a single geyser yet. Remember, water's at a premium. Now we do have other planetoids, namely the one closest to us, whichever one it'll be that the teleport brings us to. So if we have to, maybe we can get some water over there and ship it over. But if we're using the basic full Rodriguez to provide oxygen for our duplicates, not only will we need five of them, they'll also have to be running flat out. That comes up to be with four electrolyzers per full Rodriguez, that's a total of 20 electrolyzers, which is a requirement of 20 kilos of water. Oh yeah. 
per second. I'm letting the dupes take a quick break from the digging. I want to get all of this muck root transported back into our ration box. Yeah, we're sitting at 32,000 calories right now, most of it in muck root, but the dupes, they're not going to stop coming. And there went one piece of muck root all the way down here. For our next digging tax, I think we'll start off in here. We'll avoid touching that area for now. Go straight across. And maybe we can see what this looks like and have an opportunity to drop these two tanks. We have nice visibility now on this side of the map and there's nothing stopping us from making a big tank in the future here. Temperature looks okay, but again, this biome is a little warmer than our standard starting biome. So I think we'll drop down in here, dig some ladders down to about here, open this tank up just a smidge, and that way we will be able to drop this water tank here and this water tank here. Now chances are our duplicates are going to get a touch of hypothermia, but they'll be okay. Now it looks like we're going to have an opportunity to have a ladder rung on this side of the colony and then a ladder rung on this side of the colony. But I want to make sure that these center areas are big enough for any of our future needs. So in this case, I want to make sure that we can make the Great Hall as big as possible. Looking at the Great Hall, it can be as large as 120 tiles. So we take this here, we go over 120 tiles, and that gives us a good spot to know where we want that ladder to start. You add a couple tiles for door width and everything, and you end up right around here. So this is where we drop all of that water. Our duplicates finally have an extra skill point into hard digging. Now this really opens up the map for us. We'll be able to get through all of this harder stuff here, extend the tank out as much as possible, Additionally, we'll finally be able to join these cops here inside this barracks. That looks good there, and you can see that we just got to pause to add another dupe. This will be our first full barracks. It is 32 degrees here, so we need to be careful because eventually we're going to have to grow crops. But without further ado, next dupe time. As luck would have it, these are all just not great choices. We have an Ari who's a decorating doctor, which is, as you know, how I like to have my doctors. Sort of two birds, one stone except they're unempathetic, which means they have a decreased medicine. Yeah, that's not great. And then you have Stinky, who is a suit-wearing researcher. That would be our third researcher. They have Handy, which is increased construction, but then they're unconstructive. We can't take Marie because they're narcoleptic, have a critter aversion, they're biohazardous. It's just a lot of negatives. So because I don't want another researcher and Stinky can't do any building, I think we're going to go ahead with the Ari. And we'll just have the world's worst doctor. With that, welcome duplicate number five, Nazgul. And that's not too bad. We'll have an early decorating dupe. So if we want to carve any blocks or something, this is okay. So far, we're making great progress. But I think we need to start turning our eyes onto a food source. Now, the food's going to be a little tricky to begin with. We have a lot of natural food here. So we're definitely going to be able to enable auto harvest on most of this, which is good but we probably need to start growing some regular mealwood. I'd prefer to wait until we have a dupe that can do cooking so they can turn it into pickled meal so it'll last longer. And our first duplicate has contracted hypothermia. Now you might not be thinking it's a big deal, which to tell you the truth, it's really not. But if you look the fact that, especially in the early game, they receive a minus five to construction, that's pretty big from our builder digger. Now, luckily, the time to recovery is only 0.2 cycles, so they'll be okay, but it's still something to keep an eye on. I was considering what to do with Naz's priorities. Obviously, they're going to care about decorating, but when dupes are decorating, most of the dupes can't do decorating tasks. They require a certain set of skills. For instance, only Naz can use blank canvases and large sculpting blocks. Everybody else can't. That causes you not really needing to upvote him for decorating, except for the fact we also want them to do something else. And in this case, we want them to do the supplying and the storing in their off time. But because these are upvoted, if we did have a decorating task, they'd never get along to it because they'd do all the supplying and storing first. So we'll also put a decorating there. And because they're also our colony doctor, we'll upvote doctoring. Good news in some of our exploration, we've seen that we do have some thimble reed. That will definitely help us out when we do permanent bathrooms. We'll throw the thimble reed in the back, start getting some early reed fiber. Also found a caustic biome with some drecos, and it's one of those biomes that also has a bunch of algae in it too. So it'll give us more time to stay on the oxygen diffusers. 
Now this is definitely interesting. We have access to dust caps. We could grow mushrooms early on. Mushrooms are not that bad of a source. And it gives you an ability to get rid of all your slime. Each mushroom takes four kilos of slime per cycle, but at the end, you're given a mushroom worth 2,400 calories. Oh, this is not good news down here. We have a cool steam vent producing steam at 110 degrees. And because we just exposed it, it's really gonna start cooking this area up. And then right above it, you can see it's already 40 something degrees. Actually, to tell you the truth, because it's in such a small area, we're gonna let it do its thing. Eventually, it'll fill up with water, which will kill the cool steam vent all on its own, and then keep it cool. All right, good news here. We are ready to actually drop some tanks. In an effort not to have water go off this side, I think we're just going to do it this way. This will be nice and easy here. And then we can also just dig to open that area up. Nice and easy. Because we have such an early start on the water supply, I think we might go into some early bathroom setup. We can start by getting plumbing. Head all the way down in here to the water sieve. We'll grab bathrooms on the way up and then even have early access to the electrolyzer. In order for that to happen though, we need to put down the supercomputer. Now I want to put the supercomputer down here. That way we still have access to this beautiful light, which means we need to move this ration box. It'd be great to have it in an area with some carbon dioxide. That way it stays even fresher for longer. So I think we're going to open this area up for a couple of ration boxes. This carbon dioxide will sit down into here. This will be nice. The water is draining absolutely beautiful. And by plan, I hope we made it deep enough. Looking at it, I absolutely do not think we did. So we're going to do a quick dig command right here to give it some more space. We'll make that a priority six so we don't have a giant mess. Another great thing about the dust caps is they can go all the way up to 35 degrees, which will give us a little bit more headroom than, say, the mealwood here. The mealwood only goes up to 30. Looks like we have found our first geyser, along with another couple of dust caps. In fact, there's one right there. We can get that fungal spore. It might be a little easier to grab that one than some of the others. And we've hit an automatic pause because it's time for another dupe. In this earlier set of dupes, we're going to be paying a little bit more attention to their interests because we actually need their skills. Later on, we don't really care. I really was taking a look at Joshua looking great with cuisine, but unfortunately they're flatulent. Thanks, Josh. That leaves Gossman, which would be a rancher builder, and then Travaldo. Travaldo has an irritable bowel, which is not that big of a deal, but they also have increased agriculture. Considering we're getting into meal wood and dust caps, I was thinking about them. We're also eventually going to need to do some ranching, so I think Gossman is it. Duplicate number six, Jack died. Well, I hope not but that's their name. Now there's a couple other things that we want to knock out in this first episode. First, I'd like to get some planter boxes and stuff down, but it brings up the point that we have two jumbo batteries producing heat up here. That is not good for growth, right? So then you're thinking, okay, well, let's set up that early power plant. Good stuff. I think it should go down here. This is far enough away. It shouldn't be causing any heat problems. Now it will be a pain in the butt when they come and refill the coal especially considering we don't have automation yet because there'll be so much carbon dioxide, which makes me think we want to go one higher. So we'll open that up probably to there. And then we're going to open this one just to get more room for our carbon sink. And then I'd like to get dust caps going, but I don't want to touch this polluted oxygen area until we have our friend, the deodorizer. Now we are close and it'll also give us access to the carbon skimmer, which we will need. So we're going to go ahead and blast into that. All right, we're going through the process of laying down some meal lice. This is all good. Separating them into groups of five so we know exactly how many duplicates this will feed. It looks like these first three levels will be meal lice. Uh, this fourth level here is where we're actually going to start our mushroom growth, which is really good because all this carbon dioxide is already sitting in there. Whenever you're building your sort of mushroom farm, you always want to do the doors in sort of reverse so that carbon dioxide sort of stays. But unfortunately, that shine nymph is going to go unless they escape through here because our dust caps do not like light. The good news though is we have access to our deodorizer so we can put just a couple of them right here. And I think three is good. Hook it up to our power spine here. And that way when we dig in, none of this polluted oxygen is gonna escape into our base, which is kind of good. And we'll keep that opening small too. Something like that. And then we'll just dig down in here and then we should be able to grab that one fungal spore. Another thing about mushrooms is you actually have to store slime, which can be a pain in the butt. 
Well, there's an easy way to do it while preventing it from off-gassing. You just put a little bit of water to cover up the storage bin. So we'll throw a bottle empty here, one little tile, and that way the little water will sit right here. In fact, we probably should do this. And that way, in case we ever want to remove that sandstone, the water won't leave. Then we put all of our slime in here, and perfect. Powering through the research, we've already finished coal generators. So I think we'll just go ahead and put, say, two of them for now. Eventually, we'll have the third one over here, so we don't need to dig this out quite yet. But we will go ahead and put that storage bin for the coal. And then when we're ready, we can throw a water sieve and carbon skimmer down here. And it's already time for a new dupe. I'd love to have that beautiful oxifern seed, but no dupes only. All right, we have a suit wearing rancher who's also a ludite. Don't love the ludite. And then we have a doctor operating rocketry person. Small bladder and an unpracticed artist. Man, we're getting some junk dupes, huh? I guess we'll take the next rancher. That brings us to duplicate number seven, Carol. Let's get at it, Carol. With our coal generators coming online, it really makes me want to get into smart batteries so we don't waste too much coal, especially considering we only have six and a half tons right now and we're not running hatches. So until we get smart batteries, I think we're going to go ahead and disable the two coal generators and then head straight on towards smart batteries, which you're right there. Easy enough. We finally finished building out our main great hall now that we've extended and dropped those water tanks so we can do one of these numbers and really be ready for some duplicates. I think we'll also throw some additional hanging plants just whenever we get there and that way we can get some early decor bonuses too. Now this is something you don't see every colony. We have two researchers both doing research at the same time in cycle 13. So I was smart enough to get the smart battery, except not smart enough to realize and remember that you need refined metal. Back to the research pane, because we need to grab our friend, the Rock Crusher. I'd never thought at cycle 14 with seven dupes, I'd say I need more dupes. We're falling behind on all sorts of tasks. We need to get these coal generators in. I need to get the Rock Crusher down. Research has now began on automation wire. Still got to get the dust caps going. Now that's going to be slow going, but just like the mealwoods, we're already used all the seeds we've found so far, and we're ready to put down some more planter boxes. Rock crusher going in here. The rest of this is being dug out for our sort of temporary carbon sink. And once the rock crusher will get just enough refined metal to be able to produce our smart battery, I hate using the rock crusher to get our refined metal, but early on, you can't really beat it. Look at all this beautiful algae. I'm not too worried about running out of algae so far. We're at 20 tons now, and I see a lot of algae around this map. A couple of things about all this meal ice. Even though we probably don't even have the seeds quite yet, we're not going to plant these ones in yet. A couple of reasons why. First, the dupe labor required to keep spitting dirt into all these and then harvest them is a lot. And while we do have sterile atmosphere already, thanks to the carbon dioxide sitting above these ration boxes, and it will keep the meal lice going for a little bit longer, it is much better to store pickled meal because it lasts an incredible long time, which is perfect for us when we keep growing dupes, we always want to have a little bit of food. And until we get power situated to where we can start running refrigerators, I think this will do fine. All right, looking at our rock crusher, we need 200 kilos of refined metal for the smart battery, plus a little bit for the automation wire. So just to have a little bit on hand, we'll do say six of these. Our friend the Rock Crusher is a huge duplicate labor sink, so you want to minimize how much you're doing in there. And we're breaking into our first little slime biome patch, which is good because we're also going to need slime to be able to feed the mushroom, and we haven't really gotten a lot of it. We'll have some pieces here that will help keep that one mushroom that we're going to start off with going until we get over into here. By then, we'll have plenty of slime to go through. Our mushroom is in. We're dropping off the water now. One bottle is fine, 200 kilos. And then we'll be able to put organic and collect all that slime. Priority four, of course, for your storage bins. You don't want dupes running back and forth as their top priority, filling up storage bins. Now, because I don't have a ton of carbon dioxide, I have a couple of options. I can start pumping carbon dioxide in here, or I could lower this even further by using one of the fangled farm tiles. In fact, if we continuously have this problem, I think that's what we'll do. Duplicate 8 came a little quicker than I was expecting, but looks like we finally found our cook. Supplying cuisine in the form of an auto, biohazardous and squeamish, no big deal, and they're stylish. 
who is magical dupe number eight? None other than Eilert, I think. Here's my big disclaimer going forward. I'm going to butcher a lot of your names. If I do, I apologize. Please just correct me in the comments below. So you might wonder, in fact, I also get a lot of comments, why don't you use farm tiles more? Well, I prefer using the planter boxes. That way, when I'm ready to remove the farm tiles, you don't have to play that game with removing two of them and then destroying these two because you're basically destroying somebody's floor, which is very inconvenient. We have the refined metal for our beautiful smart battery. Throw that down right there, and then we'll be able to link it up like so. Once we get the smart battery in, we can enable the coal generators, and it's going to be great because we're going to be able to get rid of this manual generator. Unfortunately, when we destroyed the planter box to put down the farm tiles, well, the slime went with it, and a little bit of slime off-gassed which caused some polluted oxygen. So we're gonna fix it real quick by putting a little deodorize in here temporarily. And that way we don't have any problems with the polluted oxygen in here. We'll go ahead and set up our smart battery as 9060. That looks perfect. And then we'll enable these beautiful coal generators. And then we get to deconstruct this dupe labor wasting wheel. We can also get rid of these batteries, which we're gonna do now, even though there's a lot of power in here to drain, it'll mess up the smart battery and not to mention the fact that it is producing a little bit of heat. Eight duplicates in, 16 cycles. That's not too shabby, right? I think we've made a lot of headway for episode number one. Looking forward to recording episode number two. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Next episode, I think we're going straight on getting our kitchen going, expand our dust cap farm, and then start ripping apart a ton of biomes. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too, and I'll talk to you soon.